Food Shortage Fears. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look and a talk about this article written by Tarek Brooker discussing, well, food shortage warnings or food shortage fears that seem to be appearing more and more in the media and around the world. Now, what we'll look at before we jump into that are just the current prices of beef and wheat futures. Now, for those of you that don't know, you know, we've had uh, with our family, we've gone through quite a dietary journey. You know, we had the standard Australian diet. If anything, it was probably worse what we were eating than normal people. You know, Rachel and I, we'd work in the office and we'd drive home all the time and you'd drive past Macca's. Okay, we'll get a family box. We're both too tired to eat. And essentially, you're eating seed oils and seed oils and sugar there. Pretty much that's what you're eating. A lot of carbs, a lot of sugar, a lot of seed oils, which you know, correlate surprisingly well to the rise in heart disease. I, I'm sure, I'm sure they're still all super healthy and that's why they put them in those meat alternatives. Uh, so we, went, we ended up going through keto. We ended up, oh, first we started the Daniel fast, which is hardcore veganism. Then we did keto and then we went carnivore. And right now I'm kind of off of the wagon a little bit. The carbs have crept back in, which tends to happen when Rachel gets pregnant <laughs> because then the chocolate appears around the house. But, uh, you know, we still do things like buy our beef in bulk and I intend to get back on the wagon. So my concern is about all this is not there's going to be fears of starvation or people, particularly in Australia, everyone. It, we've got more than enough food for our population. If anything, it's logistical issues. But what's going to happen is prices are going to go up. Food is going to get much more expensive. So people are going to stop eating healthy things like meat and animal fat and a start are going to go to the more cheaper product. And I think a lot of people already do the wheats, the grains, the carbohydrates, the seed oils. And then that's going to manifest in health issues. We've got this pandemic. You're, it's a 44, you're 44 times more likely to suffer, uh, need hospitalization if your BMI is higher than a healthy level. I think over 30. Just think about that. That's a risk factor. That's a comorbidity that isn't discussed. And one way to address that, that we all can, is our diet. So, you know, but the problem is the crap food is cheaper. The wheats, the carbohydrates, all of that stuff, the sugar, the seeds, oil, they're cheaper. They are so much cheaper. A food budget for the family, you know, used to be, I think Rachel got it down to $400 a month. $400 a month for a big family. There was five of us at the time. So... I thought we'd have a look at some beef prices. Uh, and this is right now for a yearling steer, 280 to 330 kilograms. This is the cents per kilogram weight. And right now it's up from, you know, about what, 390, over 500 bucks. This is in Armadale in New South Wales. Okay, so this is showing you over the year how beef prices have gone up. Because beef is one of the healthiest foods. And if those, what, what you want to do is if you want to, get good beef you try and uh, pay extra for pasture finished you don't want the grain stuff you, you want to you know, really you'd, it'd be great to have uh, regenerative av agricultural beef and have that marketed here's in queensland we're we're over four dollars eighty so 480 cents probably 490 if not a bit more nearly five bucks a kilogram for a yearling steer 280 to 330 kilograms in black hole so it's cheaper in Queensland slightly than New South Wales. And then I thought I'd bring Victoria as well. And this is from the MLA. If you want to find it, I'll link to it in the the, uh, the comments uh, down below. If you want to have a look at, you know, the nearest, <laughs> how much beef is going. Have a look at Victoria, guys, in Camperdown. Look at that. Boom. Okay. It's surged up. We actually... Uh, you know, a couple of years ago when we bought a full beast, we got a, the butcher sourced it from Victoria. It's really good quality. Nice, nice meat. And we've had the issue where because we've moved out of this place and we're in a little rental and I'm renovating here, we just don't have the freezer space. So I finally moved one of the upright freezers. So we're getting half a beast again. And the butcher hasn't been able to give us a price. He said, we can't give you a price. We don't know where it's going to, you know, there's all these issues. There's supply issues. Prices are all over the place. And we're seeing that right here. Now, we also have wheat is getting more expensive, and I'm not a fan of wheat. You know, it's not, you don't need, 
You don't need it, guys. There's no such thing as a wheat deficiency in your diet. But it's a backup food, everyone. It's food for your food or a backup food. And it's still getting more expensive. So even the cheap rubbish that people eat is going to get more expensive. That's how we're going to see it manifest, at least here in Australia. So let's have a look at this article written by Tarek and see what his take on it is and uh, if he's concerned about it or worried about it or if we should be as well. So Australia has done little to prepare for food shortage warnings. There's a new global crisis that threatens our economy and could see Aussie troops deployed. Yet it's not really talked about. So famous early 20th century author Mark Twain said history does not repeat but it often rhymes throughout the history of humanity that's been all that's been all too true despite the wars famines and plagues that have impacted those who came before us the lessons they learned and how to adapt and cope seem to have all too easily been lost to time and hubris well isn't it the old saying you know uh, tough times make strong men, strong men make good times, good times make weak men, weak men make tough times. Perhaps, perhaps we're now in the, the slow ebb of, well, the end of an empire. We'll have to see. So, the pandemic was no different, was no different Oh, sorry, the coronavirus pandemic was no different. Despite a clear framework of quarantine and mask usage, which was used successfully during the Spanish flu, much of the world needed to learn the lessons the hard way all over again. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Comparisons to the Spanish flu, yeah, they can be made. But you've got to understand the technology we have now to genetically sequence this illness. And if, even if it happened 10, 15 years ago, you wouldn't have the same capabilities and understanding that we have now. So it kind of is a bit of a different world. And people will, well, people are understandably hesitant. Unfortunately, while the world has been busy attempting to come to grips with the pandemic, another arguably worse crisis has been brewing in the developing world. A global human catastrophe. In April last year, the UN World Food Program warned the UN Secretary uh, Security Council that a biblical famine and a global human catastrophe lay ahead if nations did not prepare and act to prevent them. Yet despite these warnings at the highest level, little has been done to address the potential disastrous consequence of global food shortages and skyrocketing food prices. In recent years, global food production has been hit by a number of different factors. Locust swarms in East Africa, India, China, elsewhere have severely impacted crop yields and new planting. African swine fever has impacted pork production in much of the world, most notab notably in China. As a result of the virus, tens of millions of pigs were destroyed, creating a huge protein shortage. According to experts, it could be years before China is able to, able to sufficiently rebuild its pig herd. And this is just to name a few. Well, we've also had the droughts here in Australia, and that's affecting the beef prices and the bushfires. Uh, then we get to the elephant in the room, the pandemic. As a result of the pandemic and those associated, and the associated impact on agricultural commodity prices, Crop plantings were abandoned due to restrictions and a truly staggering amount of food was dumped or destroyed. Pets, oh sorry, pigs, we're not in Venezuela yet for Lorian. Pigs, chickens and cows were euthanized by the millions. Oh, see, the, the greenies would love that. They would love it. Milk was quite literally dumped down the drain and vegetables were left to rot. Well, this is the thing, everyone. You know, you, you, you can't grow your own food. You can't buy from a local farm. You need to buy the, the uh, you know, Franken food rubbish from the factories. The, I, honestly, I think that our diet is going to have more greater health. We've got, a, we've got a, a pandemic of terrible eating that's manifesting in so many ways in people's lives. Rising food prices. As a result of these factors and, and others, global food, food prices are now skyrocketing. Using Bloomberg's Agricultural Spot Index as a benchmark, global agricultural prices have risen by 77.1% in the past year. For Australians and others in the Western world, this is likely to lead to rising costs at this supermarket checkout. Well, have you seen it, everyone? I'll let you know how much this half beast costs. We were spending around two to two and a half thousand on a full beast just about a year ago so it'll be interesting to see what it goes up to but you know for us we can afford it and 
It's a health issue. Some people can't. That's the problem. I'd rather they subsidise access to meat for the population than all these other things. You do that before giving people 2% home loans. Do that before, you know, that would save you so much money in your healthcare costs. Just imagine if you ended diabetes in Australia. Or if low carb diets were recommended by the government. So, but with a large proportion of the cost of our nation's supermarket food being driven by corporate costs such as packaging, marketing, and health profit margins, at this point, it's unlikely to deal a major blow to household finances. Well, yeah, I mean, even packaging is going up. We're seeing it in the US with all of the organizations that are responding to the oil price surge. In the developing world, where agricultural product is sold to consumers with a far smaller percentage of the price going to a middleman, the impact of rising food prices will be felt more sharply. This rise in the price of most basic food staples is coming at the worst possible time. Billions are still facing the pandemic, ravaging their nation, with India and Brazil suffering particularly badly. So it's going to plunge into poverty. Since the pandemic began, 134 million people have been plunged out of the global middle class and millions more continue to be plunged into poverty with each passing month. From the era, era of the Roman Empire to the modern day uh, Syrian civil war, food insecurity and rapid food price inflation was proven to be the potent fuel for civil unrest and armed conflict. He's right there. He's 100% right there. While it's not the first time in recent history certain specific nations have faced these types of challenges, the major difference this time is that the problems could be truly global in nature if the predictions of a biblical famine come to pass. Unlike any point since the Great Depression, every nation in the world is struggling with the same truly global forces impacting their economies and populations all at the same time. But what does this all boil down to? With the world already on edge for a potential clash of the superpowers over eastern Ukraine or Taiwan, food shortages and price inflation is a recipe for social unrest and political instability across much of the globe. All in all, as we head into the future, these various factors are likely to make the world a more dangerous and unstable place, potentially sharing commonalities with the collapse of the Soviet Union only on a global scale. So what impact will this have on Australia? For Australia, our nation is likely to face a number of different impacts. Demand to migrate to our isolated and stable nation may increase significantly as the world's well-off look to move to safer shores. So, you know, what will that do? What will that do for house prices, guys? You know, global famine, Australian house prices to the moon. I did a joke poll yesterday asking people what they thought would happen to house prices in Australia, the housing market, if we had a... Uh, you know, nuclear strike on the on the country. Have a look and, and let me know your thoughts on that one. And it's a joke, guys. Some people don't have a sense of humor. It's kind of sad. Like Europe, following the Syrian and Iraqi wars, conflicts around the globe and social unrest may see a large influx of refugees seeking asylum in Australia. And that's, well, look at all these social issues that that's caused in Europe over there. This is the danger, everyone. If, if you have, in a multicultural society... If you have just some slight things pushing boiling tensions over, then you have civil unrest, you're going to have tribal um, uh, people become tribalistic and then you know, countries fall apart. Look at Yugoslavia, everyone. As tensions flare and risks of violence or even open warfare emerge, Australia's armed defense force are likely to be called upon to provide peacekeeping forces to global hotspots. So a threat of war. But perhaps the worst case scenario that a struggling world may face is a hot war between the US and its allies and China over Taiwan. Given Australia's history in backing up the United States in military action for over 75 years, it's almost certain Australia would be called upon to provide support. Whether or not we will see the global human catastrophe the United Nations warned of remains to be seen. But ultimately, as the world struggles with rocketing global food prices, food shortages, and the decimated livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people, it is a powder keg of potential civil unrest and conflict. As we head into a new and uncertain decade, history may not repeat, but there is every chance that it'll once again rhyme. So, what do you all think, everyone, about this piece written by Tarek? So, you know, he's highlighting the fact that 
well, there are food issues manifesting around. We're seeing it in our own markets, in our own beef prices. You can see it manifest in wheat futures as well. Could it lead to civil unrest? What would happen here in Australia? And, I mean, what's the danger of multicultural societies when you start to have civil unrest due to food shortages? <laughs> what's happened in history there? So what's the solution and less, uh, lessons? The only one I can suggest at the moment is buy in bulk. Stock up, buy while you can. You know, if it's only a temporary thing, which I'm hoping it will be, prices, remember, prices are just signals to the market. So that means opportunities will arise from these signals. So it's not, you know, there could certainly be social unrest. The prices could go up. There could be issues around the world. I'm hoping it's not going to happen. But I'd suggest if you want to save money on your groceries, buy in bulk. Rachel's done a video about buying beef in bulk you can find on this channel with advice and hints. She's out of action at the moment because unfortunately she injured herself uh, rendering some fat to get tallow because it's so healthy to use. And sadly, she put it in a poured into a glass jug instead of waiting for it to cool and it exploded. So a valuable lesson for her and the children, uh, but kind of... She's doing okay, guys, but it's it's tough on her. So she, I think she'll be, you know, hobbling around for a while, sadly. But still, she still wants to buy beef in bulk. She still wants to make her tallow because she knows the benefits of it. That's the suggestion I would give if we're going to see prices rising. But Florian, what if you buy it at the peak? Well, you buy it at the peak and you eat some uh, expensive, healthy meat. It's still going to be cheaper buying in bulk than buying at the shops, everyone. If you're struggling to make ends meet and you need to save money. You know, maybe, maybe you look at getting rid of a lot of the, you know, additions to your diet that you don't need. And just you know, stick with your good animal products. What do you reckon? Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this episode. Are you worried about a global food shortage? How are you preparing it for it yourself? Have you become a prepper? Have you gone rural? I know some people, you know, have moved to the country, they've got nice land, they've got their own ability to farm and run cattle. A bit different for those of us in the city. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down below. And if you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content I create, here are a few ways you can support us. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, where if you go for Self Wealth, we each get five free share trades. If you sign up for Stake and fund your account, we get a free share. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. We have pocket squares. Perfect. I, perfect for when society rebuilds from crumbling ashes and you need to go to a function. <laughs> the reason we have pocket squares is I used to wear suits all the time and I'd always wear pocket squares instead of a tie. Ties were just too, it's too hot here in Queensland and that's enough to just class it up a little bit. And also we wanted to provide a, a you know, good for the channel, some merch that we made ourselves. So Rachel made these, we had them printed up the road. It's actually completely Australian made. Everything else you got to get brought in. I'm trying to get Steins, everyone, and they're all brought in from China. Finally, you can uh, use PayPal or Gold Pass. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.